Hi, this is Ricky Sun. I'm a Pi consultant. In this video, I want to talk about how to think like a Pi adapters. When I do the configuration of the Pi adapters, I have to be like a Pi adapters in order to think how do you configure it and how do you make it work. So I was totally immersed into it and then I got it working finally. So I'm not going to share with you how to do it and so there are a couple steps to do it and the first step is to configure a component right create a component inside the pi adapters like that's the very first step create a component is like creating a pi interface instance but except in adapter you don't create pi interface instance you create component that's kind of like you give it a name and then specify the type let's say if it is rdbms pi adapters then it is rdbms type with a name of the component that's the very first step you have to do in order to start configuring that component the second step is to configure data source once you have that component you call it rdbms1 let's say there is example out there in the internet that as well you configure data source where do you want to grab your data pi adapters we want the data source where is the data coming from is it an rdbms sql servers or it may be obc ua the third one is make the query in this example i'm talking about sql query because I was configuring RDBMS Pi adapters. First, you need to have the SQL query available so that you can configure the rest of the steps. And you have to test that SQL query in your maybe SQL management studio, make sure it works before you put it into the Pi adapters because if it is too complicated how I was doing it is I make a small table with like just time and value column without anything else and I try to get it working when I get everything working I put in a more complicated query inside so that I, I wanted to see how to select the rows and columns how it works differently in a different table don't make the mistake of making a complex table to try to get it working first have the simple table get everything working and then you start adding more complexity onto the query make sure you tested that query and make sure it works first otherwise you have to debug and all that which i'm going to cover fourth step is to do the data discovery data discovery in the pi adapter to me is kind of like execute the sql query you have the sql query now and i want to do data discovery meaning i want to execute the query and get the result and that's how i think of it fifth step is to do the data selection so you got some result return i want to create the tags and also select which tag to create that's data selection where is the data is it in this row or this row where is the timestamp that's the data selection this is how i think of it when i configure it so bear with me and then once you get the data selection and by the way you have to configure end to end like what i talk about everything and then you can see the result from the very end which is from the pi system from the pi system you see tags and then you see data meaning you have successfully configured it in the middle like what i talk about thinking like there are hints to tell you whether you configure it right or not but it's very hard to correct your mistake in the middle so you have to go through the step again like a whole series again what i normally do is i remove the data discovery i remove data selection i remove the query i remove that multiple times when i do the discovery i see some data structure 
how many things we turn. And then when I do the data selection, I see, okay, I selected 100 tags in your data selection process. You kind of know, I will add that amount of stream inside the Pi system without the egress endpoint. Egress endpoint is not your Pi data archive. It's not your AF server. It's your Pi web API server that connect to AF and data archive. So egress endpoint actually is a configuration for you to point your adapters to the Pi Web API. You can make your Pi Web API highly available, right? Through a network load balancers, and if you want to make it XJ, egress endpoint also like Pi Web API. You can only configure it to point to a single AF database actually also data archive as well. So if you have multiple Pi data archive servers or AF database, you would need to configure your Pi web API configuration to point to different AF and different data. So that's the six steps of the essential element for configuring the Pi adapters. And now I'm going to talk about the data filtering, like that's an optional configuration. You can configure that band. It's like exception compression inside for your tags with high interface. You can make it not getting duplicated data. You can also make your schedule. You can schedule it for every two minutes to get the data instead of five minutes or five seconds or something like that. So that's data filtering. That's kind of like exception compression. And the logs, the logs to me, I have to turn it on to trace a couple of times in order to get a everything working because there are step along the way. I talk about six step of how to configure the Pi adapters. But if one of the part doesn't pass through, you will have to go into your uh, logs to identify what is really not configured properly. In my case, actually is the egress endpoint. I didn't have the appropriate account with right access to the data and the point configuration from the Pi adapters. And then that throw an error and then I could not get the data into the Pi's data archive. And also I could not create the tags. If I don't change the log to trace or debug, I would not be able to find out how to get it working because it is so hard to know without the logs. After you configure everything, assuming you can collect the data and everything is fine, you should also configure your help points for the Pi adapter because you would want to know when it's stop for some reason you can do the notification yourself that's an optional component you can configure to the adapter more amenable when i configure this adapters thing it is really hard it is like version one point something it's not really commonly used it's kind of new well maybe one year but you're still new not many people using it. When you call tech support, they might just have no experience and try to answer your question. And you know, my game plan for these Pi adapters was, I read the menu, I watch the YouTube video that is available. I saw a lot of web API examples. I know this is many, many web API examples. There are less edge command examples. My plan was make it working with Web API through the Postman software, and then I convert Web API to edge command PowerShell. Because you know, Web API does not allow you to script it, but PowerShell allows, so you can do block execution. Postman, you can do requests one at a time, but I like to, at the very end, convert everything back to Edge command with PowerShell, because I think it can be more dynamic, like maybe I'll put it to CSV file. I'll put the logs and all that to a file. You can save it and all that. But with Postman, you cannot do that. So that's why I have to understand the whole thing with Web API first and then go to Edge command and then PowerShell and then everything is great. I would honestly tell you I am very new to it, but I am 
better than most people now because of what I have grown through with tech support or the experience I have with the Pi adapters. It is quite a pain because there isn't too much example in the Edge command and it's a command line basis. You have to configure the whole series of configuration like the essential six step in order to see the result. And my suggestion for you is, let's say configure the Pi adapter for RDBMS or OPC UA. You use a very basic example, get it working before you add on more stuff. Get it working and then add more. I made a mistake of making a complex query and then that query actually having syntax error, I would not be able to figure out in the adapters. And then I, at the end, I fall back to a simple database example, get it working and then I'm like, okay, this is the area I should focus on because this part doesn't work. And then I keep troubleshooting until I get it working like the query. Make sure the query is working. If you don't get the query working, rest of the step is not gonna work. You configure the egress and then you cannot send data because the data discovery and data selection is not working. So it's like you have to make every step all along the way right in order to get to the final destination, which is get the tech update inside your Pi system. I thank you for watching. Please subscribe and see you on the next one. Thank you, bye.